Ayo, what is up everyone? It is the Alpha J of the Alpha J Show, and let's continue on with round two of the bracket. It will be short, about eight pairs, 16 really good episodes, but wait, this is very important guys. Please vote in the poll of this video, clicking on the circle with the eye over here, and vote for the following. For this last part of the bracket, should I knock out the finals in one whole video, or tackle the quarter and semifinals in one, and then leave the finals to its own separate video? It's completely up to you guys. The former allows for me to finish the bracket a lot sooner so it opens it up for a new bracket or for other videos that I might want to make but the latter allows for a neat last final video which will allow me to put a little bit more effort into letting it go out with a bang but it's pretty much up to you guys it's whatever you guys want since we've talked about all these episodes at length before in other videos of this bracket it's pretty much clear that this is going to be a lot more of why episode a is better than episode B in a sense and not directly talking about what what I think of these episodes, just to not be too redundant. Other than that, let's get into this. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy versus Pickles. With two wins, pretty much, Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy has stood out to me for the way that SpongeBob was handled, very naive and innocent. The same can be said for Pickles. It was a new experience for him, and both episodes share this common trait. Story-wise, I'd like to think that Pickles handled this sort of trait a lot better. It was a lot more to the point and solid, and impacted me personally a lot more. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy's story was also pretty good good, but we're comparing a B plus to an A plus. Comedy wise, Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy is pretty good, but Pickles is also pretty good, so I don't believe either is going to edge it comedy wise, because there isn't really that many really funny moments in either episode. However, I would consider Pickles to be just more fun, in the sense of they played up cartoonish aspects a lot better, and it felt more like an adventure, whereas Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy served more as allowing this sort of sponge lore to manifest, having a lot of what established the initial Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy relationship. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy does stand the test of time a little better because it wasn't written as an open and shut story and more as a beginning to a connection between the super duo and the main duo. Pickles is an episode that is really good at what it does, but it's pretty open and shut. It has okay-ish rewatchability when it comes to me. And I'd have to hand this to Pickles regardless though, because as an overall execution, it just entertains me a lot more. It's a lot more interesting in the way that it handles the protagonist and like I said, earlier, the story is just a lot better when it comes to impact. Sleepy Time versus Culture Shock. Both episodes survived round one against the pre-game survivors. Sleepy Time has that freeform structure that I enjoyed in episodes like Bubble Stand. However, like I said before, some dreams do not really stick with me anymore, or they don't really have that much of a great execution. In concept, they all make sense, and I think it's very important to note that. Culture Shock was a very refreshing episode, considering that I felt like we don't have enough, hey, let's set up an event thing episode that isn't a time capsule, or a big pink idiot falling off a high platform for other people's enjoyment, or a play. This was actually entertaining unlike those previous three episodes that I'm implying, and I think this is a lot more of what we need as far as a concept like this. Sleepy Time and Culture Shock both have a structure of essentially multiple gags leading into the big finish. Sleepy Time is all about Spongebob hopping into dreams before getting confronted about it, and Culture Shock has a lot of Squidward trying to run a talent show until we realized that Spongebob is a true star, and I guess, in this case, Sleepy Time handled it a lot more interesting, concept-wise, but Culture Shock was just overall more solid with its punches. Although certain dreams like Gary's dream or Mr. Krabs' dream serve to be incredibly interesting, in terms of how Spongebob reacts to all of the dreams and how it relates to their overall personality, that's really just it, and far be it from me to criticize Spongebob's surface deep stories because I think it should stay that way, it's Spongebob. I don't think it should get fake deep unlike certain other shows. All I'm saying here is that Culture Shock did exactly what Sleepy Time did and more. And since this is a bracket for which episode is better, Culture Shock handled it better, with extra credit, so to speak. Which episode was funnier? Definitely Culture Shock. The initial penny joke, Mr. Absorbency, Patrick, Squidward's dancing, it just stacks up a lot better in Culture Shock's favor. When you compare it to Plankton stepping on a thumbtack of Spongebob, Patrick losing his coin, or Squidward playing Spongebob, although this is 100% subjective. Even even just the idea of Squidward giving all of the Bikini Bottom Ice a shot and seeing them essentially show off their talents, it just brings this sort of togetherness feel that we don't get in a lot of episodes because it's a lot more expensive to make episodes with tons of characters, but I do enjoy when I see episodes like that. So with that, as you may guess, the good episode that is Sleepy Time lost to the great Culture Shock, although both episodes I like, I just would prefer the latter more. Rip Pants versus Walking Small. Now we have two Goo Lagoon 
episodes that both stood the pre-games and round one of this bracket, winning against very tough competition, as I enjoy Karate Choppers and Texas quite a bit. Both episodes also deal with Spongebob essentially trying to make everyone happy, but not understanding how to get there, because he's misguided. While well, Walking Small deals with the manipulation of Spongebob when it comes to Plankton and essentially tricking the sponge into thinking that he's actually doing something valuable to the Bikini Bottomites, Rip Pants essentially boils down into Spongebob just wanting more of Sandy's attention and using a joke until it goes too far, because he's getting the results from his actions. I just want to say I really enjoy when shows take place at a familiar but not so common location, like in this instance it would be Goo Lagoon, and I just wish that more pre-season locations caught wind like Goo Lagoon did. That being said, both episodes don't really use the idea of Goo Lagoon that impressively. These very well could have happened at other locations with a few minor details tweaked. However, you can say that Walking Small definitely did use a lot more of the beach aspect for the plot, whereas Rip Pants was a lot more on the song and jokey side. In fact, speaking of the song, that really takes up time in Rip Pants. And while I like the song, when you isolate it, like in Texas, you can see a truncated story in a sense. And when you compare it to the full story like Walking Small, you can see why I would have to give it to that episode instead. Comedy-wise, Rip Pants is just an escalation of that one joke until it becomes too much. And to be fair, Rip Pants clearly focus a lot more on the story, whereas Walking Small has the assertive joke, stepping on the beach and Plankton's antics throughout. So although Walking Small clearly wins, it was for the greater good. When I lay it out to be as fair as possible, more points are given to Walking Small. I love both episodes, but being as objective as I can be, Walking Small clearly deserves to be the winner. Fun versus Jellyfish Jam. Ugh, now this pair. I knew when I saw it, it was gonna be so tragic, because while both episodes are very high in regard with me, the fate of the random pairings made it so that two really, really good episodes had to face off before they got to the final, and honestly, I didn't want to accept that I knew only one of these were gonna win. Fun and Jellyfish Jam have great stories, the former dealing with Spongebob and Plankton essentially becoming friends in this gray area of Plankton enjoying it, as at the time Spongebob saw that no one really liked Plankton and tried to convert him to being a good guy. The latter dealt with Spongebob bringing home a pet of a really important species in the Sponge Lord, a jellyfish, and all of the chaos that comes with that. Both shows have a really good good song in the middle of the episode, the former not being a production track, but both shows deal with this song in a very incredible execution when it comes to making the story pop out more. And even towards the end, like with Jellyfish Jam, it also was a very creative and fun song that I still remember to this day. Both episodes also have their funny moments, like fun in the initial chase, while exciting had a few moments that are still pretty funny to this day, whereas Jellyfish Jam had Squidward at the butt of many jokes, but I found it humorous. However, I really hate to say it, fun is just a lot more memorable, and this is coming from someone who would put Jellyfish Jam at least in the top 10 of season 1. I would have looked forward to talking about Jellyfish Jam for at least the next video, the finals, but so be it with the random number generator that made this pairing possible, so let's just rip the bandaid off. Side note, maybe if someone can find an episode that involves bringing home a wild pet that turns into chaos, I can do a versus with Jellyfish Jam. Just a thought. So yes, fun wins, but I definitely think that both episodes are the cream of the crop when it comes to pre-season, not just season one. Reef Blower versus Hooky. Now I want to address something. While it may appear that I'm constantly giving Reef Blower to win when it comes to the fact that I found it not only to work, but also be incredibly creative, one should also add the context that it went up against Naughty Nautical Neighbors and the Chaperone, the weaker side of season one. So the competition wasn't necessarily top tier. That being said, when compared to Hooky, this may seem a little controversial, but I think Reef Blower is going to continue to streak. This being said, I don't think Reef Blower will win, in fact I know so, as episodes like Fun, Walking Small, Culture Shock, and Pickles, the winner so far in round 2, would blow it out of the water. Again, like I said before, it's incredibly creative and it works really well, but the story it tells is very succinct, and I do enjoy the animation that goes on within it. It works well with the music composition it had, and it's just a little fun short to accompany T at the Tree Dome and help want it. Hooky is good, but it also went up against I Was a Teenage Gary an episode that although I like is also on the weaker side of season one and when you think of this episode Hooky I would also say it's on the weaker side of season one I enjoy the story I think Krabs performs well Patrick is a little underrated and the jokes are solid but it's just that it's solid especially when you compare it to Reef Blower in the simplest of terms both episodes are good but one is just more interesting to watch that being Reef Blower Rock Bottom versus Pizza Delivery okay so just like with the other matchups in round two of this Spongebob bracket, this one is a very 
close one, and I think you can honestly go with either episode. Although one would most likely side more with Pizza Delivery considering that it had such a heartwarming ending that's still remembered to this day, a lot of the episode was just getting to that point. Heck, even with both episodes, the opening isn't really that strong or memorable. Putting the heartwarming ending aside for Pizza Delivery, we have a lot of jokes on their journey to deliver the pizza, whereas Rock Bottom has a lot of jokes for Spongebob trying to get back on the bus. But also the concept of Spongebob being on the receiving end of this conflict works perfectly. I don't think any other character would have gotten this right with its reaction, the jokes, and just the general flow of the story the way that Spongebob did. Both episodes clearly do well in the comedy department, but how about story? Well, Rock Bottom and Pizza Delivery also follow the culture shock and sleepy time sort of freeform format. Not much happens in all four of these episodes, but it works well because of the gags in it. So again, you can go either way. The only reason I would say not to necessarily knock out Rock Bottom so quickly is because of the execution. It's just so memorable. The place is also memorable, especially more than the walk that Pizza Delivery had. And Spongebob playing off the environment is arguably on the same level as Spongebob playing off of Squidward when it comes to Rock Bottom and Pizza Delivery. However, even though I'm playing devil's advocate for Rock Bottom, that implies that I think Pizza Delivery is better. However, again, I think it can go either way. I just prefer to watch Pizza Delivery a lot more. Plankton versus Sandy's Rocket. Our last two pairs in this video, let's start off with the first pair, Plankton versus Sandy's Rocket. Both choices just barely edged a win over their respective opposing episodes, and this will be no different. I consider both of these episodes to be very good at what they wanted to accomplish. While Plankton resonates well with me for being a very good execution of the character of the same title, Sandy's Rocket was a very fun episode showing Spongebob and Patrick getting really invested in something they shouldn't have. Comedy wise, we may not really have a clear winner though. Where Plankton had a lot of jokes revolving around Plankton's size, somewhat incompetence and aloofness, Sandy's Rocket fires back with jokes revolving around Squidward when they crash on the alien planet and their initial rocket shenanigans. However, like I said earlier, I very much enjoyed the story of Plankton. It isn't as interesting of a concept as the other episode, seeing Spongebob and Patrick thinking that they're traveling to a new land, but the episode definitely keeps things interesting over the 11 minutes. That being said, Sandy's Rocket involves a lot of interesting interactions with the other town folk and has a very neat twist, all things considered. So if you were to ask, I can go either way with this, but after thinking long and hard, I decided because one of the two episodes involved the main person or duo a little better, I would go with Plankton. He was a great antagonist and bounced off of Spongebob a lot better than Spongebob turning on Patrick in the end. Last but not least, we have Tea at the Tree Dome and Squeaky Boots, two uncommon and sort of bizarre episodes. However, Opposite Day and Home Sweet Pineapple are also their own brand of bizarre. Both of these episodes here, however, Squeaky Boots and Tea at the Tree Dome, have some weird but in a good way parts. I do think that the clam wrestling is something that we don't really see too much in Spongebob as a whole, and the idea of Spongebob slowly dying of dehydration is again weird but in a good way. Squeaky Boots just has this idea of crabs going slowly insane over the boots, having this weird meltdown after being guilty for a short amount of time. Both episodes are truly weird, but cartoons can be weird. In fact, I actually think cartoons should be weird a lot more often. I really do have to hand it to Squeaky Boots though, for the cues from Telltale Heart. I remember reading it in school and I definitely see the connections there. Tea at the Tree Dome, however, is just a solid episode. Definitely a lot more memorable than Home Sweet Pineapple. And like I said before, this episode does everything better than Home Sweet Pineapple. However, I think this is going to be a really neat full circle back to the first match in round two, because like I said in that matchup, essentially both episodes are good. It's just that Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy sets up the beginning of something, whereas Pickles was a lot more open and close. And because Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy 1 was sort of an Origins episode, it loses a little rewatchability. And I think you could say that for Tea at the Tree Dome, because that's the first time that we see Sandy. It has that same feeling that Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy has. Jokes and story-wise, I think Squeaky Boots just has it down pat a little better. While I understand why people would have an issue with the squeaking, I did not, and I can't really use other people's criticisms in my own bracket made to show which episodes I would think would advance in this hypothetical bracket. So with that, the final winner of round two goes to Squeaky Boots. However, if you felt it was the other way around, I don't blame you. So that is it of round two. I will be looking at the poll before making the next video. I'm going to give this poll a week so that people can watch it, people can think over the choice they want to make. And like I said, the first choice is for me to tackle the semi-final, quarterfinal, and final all in its own video, or simply 
simply just tackle the quarter and semifinal in one and then the final in another video. So I will be looking forward to those results there. Feel free to pick either one. Special thanks to the patrons that support me in the month of June. Make sure to follow me at the Alpha J Show on Twitter and go into my request video for any other topic you think I should cover. If you really like this video, I highly suggest you check out my entire SpongeBob playlist. I've covered SpongeBob a lot on this channel and I would actually recommend my Help Wanted review. Make sure to subscribe and I'll talk to you guys next time. I hope your time is well spent and Alpha out.